All right, D-Led. Yeah, Coach, uh, Matt Ryan was named the uh, player of the week today. Uh, you discussed uh, his uh, selection there and how he's been playing for you through the first eight games. Been playing pretty well, um, and uh, you know it's a great uh, credit to Matt and how he's been playing. Really, the uh, the entire offense. Um, but yeah, very pleased with Matt. Said it many times, so it was cool to see him recognized. And uh, you know, just moving forward, uh, you know, what, what are some of the things Matt can continue to do and continue to you know help uplift uh, you know the team? Well, all of us. I mean, we, it's it's not just Matt. It's it's. Myself, everybody, every player and coach, we, we got to continue to get better. And there's things every week. There's always things that come up. Um, and that's the name of the game as you go through. We're right in the middle of the season. Uh, we're not even at the halfway point, right? We got nine games to go. Long season, we're right in the mix. We got to get better because we're playing a really good team on Sunday down in Dallas. Yeah, just uh, getting ready for them, looking at, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the offense that they have. Looks like they got a lot of weapons over there that you all have to contend with. Sure, it's a really talented, probably one of the more, more talented rosters in the NFL. They got good players in all three phases, and uh, you know we got to be ready to go. And uh, defensively, looks like they uh, uh, coach Dan's trying to attack on the defensive side of the ball. What, what are some of the traits of uh, the defense, even though they're not coming off a, a, a good performance? It's one game in the NFL. Do you let live and die every week by the narratives? The, their overall body work, they're six and two. They create a lot of turnovers. Uh, they got a lot of uh, really good football players. They attack the football and they fly around. Michael, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, you guys about a month ago, you know, you know, one and three weren't going all that well. What do you think has changed with your team to maybe put y'all on playoff contention? <laughs> I mean, we're in the middle of the NFL season. I, again, if you if you got the what was me mindset, it's probably in the business for you. So, uh, like I said, I don't live week to week and die with the the daily narratives. So who are our four and four? It's what we are. It's what we deserve to be with nine more opportunities to go. But really, you know, if you can't focus on what's ahead of us, it was a huge game on Sunday down in Dallas, and, you know, it, it, you'll get humble quick. So that's the, the challenge every week. So that's, that's how we look at it. we got a really good opponent. We are where we are. All that matters is Sunday. Where have you seen Dan Quinn's defense change from what it was in prior stops? I think he could probably use Dan's comments. I mean, he talked about it uh, in his presser on Monday. Uh, he evolved and reinvented himself playing a lot of man football. But I know Dan Quinn's a terrific football coach, one of the best genuine guys in his business, and those guys are ready to roll. So uh, playing a lot of man coverage, they're playing multiple looks, but the always trade is those guys are going to play fast and are going to attack the football. You don't have to ask him that. You know, I mean, you look at a defense. Uh, you're going to have people you've worked with every long, every every stop. Coaches know other coaches, players. You know, it's just it's what the business is. I mean, with with the way that the business is set up now, very different than it was 30 years ago, give or take. With free agency, the way the roster. I mean, look at our roster. How much it's even changed during the season. So you guys are very familiar with a lot of coaches, a lot of players on different teams. Uh, just because you know somebody, the challenge every week. People continue to evolve. It's it's a super competitive league, so but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to ask one of those one of those guys. And then just lastly, is Dante? I know on Monday you said it was possible. Do you anticipate Dante practicing this week? I do. Corey? Doesn't mean he's gonna necessarily play, but he can practice. Uh, I feel like it's been a couple weeks since asked about a Jalen Mayfield update. Can you mm -hmm. kind of just explain what you've seen Jalen Mayfield week one to Jalen Mayfield now, off kind of the halfway point? Uh, yeah, he's played like a. Rookie, but 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 been effective for us uh, for a lot of snaps. I mean, it's probably a good thing you haven't asked me about him. That's what you usually want from your old lineman and your long snapper, and that's the that's the part of the business. And so he's playing solid. Uh, Pleased with him, like a lot of guys. Though I mean, there's always things we can we can look to improve on, but it's a good thing you haven't asked me about him. I did this line, uh, a, a question for you. So it was kind of like nostalgic seeing a guy like Anthony Rush be out on the field. You know, those 350 plus guys don't kind of have gone away in the NFL today's game. So uh, how was it, you know, seeing him coming in and, and being really helpful um, in the run game against the run game? Like, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily have gone away. I mean, we played.
played some guys. I mean, the, the Giants were pretty heavy in there. A lot of teams, it depends on your defensive philosophy. So uh, it's nice to have a guy like Anthony Rush that can come in there and it was effective. And, you know, and we'll see, you know, week to week what the game plan is about who's up, who's down. Uh, but pleased with how Anthony played. And, he, you know, he, had, he was very uh, productive in his role on Sunday and it helped us win. Josh? They have kind of the mirror image of Kyle Pitts and Michael Parsons, a rookie who can do a ton of things over there. How much difficulty do you have scheming for it when they're so multiple positionally with guys like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't get into comparisons like that. Uh, he's a good football player. Uh, he can rush the passer. So, you know, you got to take account for all those guys every week. Like I said, it's NFL. Most teams have pretty good players. Um, so, he's obviously been productive in the pass rush. Uh, he's got a lot of speed, can cover a lot of ground. You know, he's a really good player. Like I said, this is one of the more talented rosters in the league. So we got our we got we got our challenges, but I, I don't look at it as a comparison. The, so you guys can you know whatever. I just I just tell you where mine goes. I mean, there's there's good players week to week. So Saints had a handful of really good defensive players. So do the Dallas Cowboys. It'd be the same story every week. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, we get, you got to account for all the players on defense. Anthony, defensively, you guys give up a two point lead, and I know obviously you want to maintain that. What do you hope? It's, it's, again, you're looking at it kind of on the on the surface here. It, it goes. There's all cause and effect in every game. It's it's a National Football League. Sure, we got to be we got to be better in certain stretches, and you don't want the penalties to happen where you give up short fields and in a quick amount of time. Because normally, you know, in that situation, the clock's to your advantage. They hit one explosive play, got a touchdown on it. We didn't do our job on offense. It, it's all three phases. If you just look at it in the defense, those are easy narratives and great. I get it, but if you really want to look at really what happened, so as a team we got to play better. And you say that, but the grand salt. So you can. This always is the thing. You got to be careful with stats, or you want to, you know, church it up a little bit and call it analytics or whatever you want to call it to sound smart. Um, at the end of the day, there's only so much time left in the game, and in all three phases you got to play pretty clean to finish off a good football team. But we have finished games. Because I, last time I checked, we won in the fourth quarter, four times. So. Yeah, you sure we all wanted to be more comfortable, but to, to do that and play a more complete game, when you give them a short field and you punt, you add on a 15-yard penalty, they get a DPI, clock's not moving, and they're gaining a lot of yards. And then we got the rough in the rough in the passer. So then that's another penalty that gets them down there. And then now it's a one-possession game, and we didn't do a good enough job the next drive to handle it. And then they have a, they have a, a punt return across the 50. So you're telling the last two offensive drives ahead are really short fields. With a lot of penalties, which label it otherwise, you're sitting back there and you're playing soft zone. They're checking it down. Great. They may pad some passing stats. There's probably not enough possessions left. So when you don't execute, we're not cleaner in the penalties. So you can't just sit there and put it on the defense. You got to put it on special teams. You got to put it on offense. Put it on me. But then ultimately, at the end of the day, we still finish the fourth quarter. So there's always things to improve on. Just like we got to get better in the run game. There's always things. That's that's the name of the game. If you continue to look objectively. So that's that answer the question. All right. Yeah, it does. Um, also, I mean, you kind of lose the special teams. I know that's kind of been a, a little bumpy for you guys. It has it? <laughs> which way? Which, uh, which way you're talking about? With the, okay, so with the special teams, with giving up the huge kick, obviously. Do you put the, the field goals and extra points and uh, some of the, you know, the kicks, the, 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 the kicks, you know, the ones we had inside? I mean, you got to put the whole thing in there. So when you say special teams, you're talking about. Which one, that's why I'm asking you to define what you're asking me. What what part? Yeah, in the game per se. Obviously, the punt return. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have one punt yeah, return. They have one return. Yes. You guys went on the field goal per se. What what are you seeing for the special teams to be able to battle through and just you know? Obviously. Like a lot, of, like a lot of three phases. There's things we got to clean up. There's some good, obviously, um, some bad, and the, you know we got to clean it up and, and be more consistent. But you're gonna take the whole thing when you put, you're saying you're throwing out these grand. Statements, you're asking about, yes, we gave up a punt return late, critical play. Deontay Harris made it. We got to cover better. We got to get off blocks. He made a play. We need to tackle on space better. We also, the punt return before that, let's not hand him things. You got a bang, bang playing on the sideline. They're going to call that. That's hand him stuff. So, again, it just depends what your mindset is. Are you taking the whole special teams or are you just saying the punt return aspect in that game on Sunday? And then Harris is a pretty good returner. So, you got to make objective decisions whether or not you want to keep kicking it to him 
The sky kicked it a couple times, so you can concede something here. So that's the name of the game. So that's why, you know, I, so I appreciate the question, but I wanted to find that a little bit more. Charles, I know you guys can have uh, uh, players in for trials uh, any given week, sure. regardless of your record. Does the tone of conversations that you might have about a player who has become a free agent change when you're a, a, in, a, in the playoff hunt? I, you, I think almost every team in the league had this had the same conversations. You know, depending where, what your situation is, where do you think you need, what do you think you can do, anything, whether you're you know you're bringing in you know specialists to kick to make sure you got an emergency list, you're bringing in you know tackles you want to look at. Uh, it's pretty common, especially this time of year, guys looking at guys and they sign for future contracts. Uh, I think probably every team in the league has those conversations daily. That's what their personal apartments do. Um, so. That's what you're asking. I think probably every team in the league has those conversations. To follow up, you've had a lot of different players. Um, well, in the last couple of weeks, different guys step up at wide receiver. Um, can you talk about what you've seen from your depth there? And you, are you content with the options that you have now? So again, I play the song and dance. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty happy with the guys we have. But any chance we have in any position, we're always looking to improve. We've seen that. I've said it in the spring, I've said it in the summer, I've said it in camp. Say it again this season, and it showed up. You know, we had James Waters we brought in here, made a huge play on Sunday. Anthony Rush, Mike Pinnell, the list goes on and on and on. Um, so anytime our personnel department does a great job, we have a collaborative effort, you always look to improve the roster if you can. Uh, yeah, Coach, was just uh, well, I was talking last night on the, the podcast, it was like the, the 90, but Brett Favre really couldn't read the defenses yet. They just started throwing screens to Edgar Bennett a lot. Can your screen and draw game help you out as you all are, you know, you're not just keep banging your head running the ball, I guess, but just kind of thinking what some of your options. Uh, you got options every week. It yeah, depends on matchups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know that's what they did back in the day. Sure, that's great. Yeah. And, 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 and so it worked. That's great. And a lot of teams find a lot of ways. We find ways to move the football. It's the name of the game. It's going to change every week depending on your matchups. What we decide to do. Schematically, it's not going to be you know same thing week after week. D led, you can improve in any area of the NFL. You can write narratives in September that aren't going to be true at the end of October, and then you can write them in November. I've seen this thing over and over again. There's a lot of ways to move the football. We got to get better a lot of ways. So I, I don't. That's a that's a great uh, sure, good good stat for there for them. I'm glad it worked for them. We got we got to find ways of things that work for us. And uh, what are some challenges that the, the defense will face against the number one rated uh, offense in the league? Well, again, I mean, it's it, it's been a very – they've turned out a lot of yards the last couple of seasons there. It's been a, you know, a very – like I said, the Dallas Cowboys, they've usually got pretty good players. Uh, they got a high-flying attack. They can, you know, they got good players. That, like I said, it's one of the more talented rosters. So they got, they got guys outside. And Cooper and Lamb, Schultz a good tight end. Got a good offensive line. Obviously, Dak's a really good quarterback. They can hand the ball to Ezekiel Elliott. They can hand it to Pollard. They got a lot of ways to move the football. And they got a really talented football team. So we got a work cut out for us. Um, but there's a challenge every week. Yeah, going into the multiplicity of different players and being able to move to different places, are there things that when you're looking at a guy, whether it's a free agent or a draft pick, that you go back to their past and try to find to say, oh, maybe this is a good predictor? I mean, you take everything into account. You want to take the whole body of work. If there's anything to help you, that's why if you got good scouts and you do your research and you, you, you're collaborating as an effort, you don't let egos get in the way, you're not running for office, you can have those conversations and make the best decision for your team. And that's what we try to do. Um, and they got to, you know, it's got to fit. And we got to, you got to have a vision, you got to make it work. I guess what I was getting at is are there things that you will see that you're like looking for maybe commonality trade wise? Sure. You're kind of getting a vision, whether it's yeah, there's things you see. sports or whatever it might be. Yeah, there's things you see. You do, no, not really. <laughs> 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 Coach, real quick, with, with having Matt Ryan, when you come to a new situation, you're trying to figure out where you need to focus first. After these first eight games, you kind of like shy away from maybe changing him, and it gives you more chance to concentrate on other. Uh, you got to worry about everybody in your roster. I mean, it's just things you're looking at and what you know that they're going to try to take away. And 
That's a challenge every week when you're game plan. There's always things. Uh, again, I mean, if you just look at numbers, and he's been productive, but he's been productive in a lot of different systems. That's where I think he's really underrated because a lot of quarterbacks are usually with the same system for most of their career or a long stretch of the career. He's changed in a lot of systems. And that's a credit to him. It's, it's allowed him to kind of reinvent himself subtly that most people don't know. There's some things that we've asked him to do that he wasn't comfortable with in his past that he's been, he's been really effective this year for us. But we'll continue to push and, and find the right balance. But that's with every player on the roster. You know, whether he's in year 14 or year 50 like Colquitt, you know, there's still things you got to tweak and, and you're trying to, to improve. So. Well, what, what I mean is, like you just said, he was able to adapt to what he sure. wanted to do. Does that allow you when you have a quarterback that says, okay, he's finding what I'm trying to put on the field here? Does that allow you to work on the run game? Does it allow you to maybe fit a little more? There's control? always things to work on. You're not just going to ignore one thing. If you do, shame on you. Uh, that, that, cause that's what's going to, you know what I mean? Like most people are going to try to take away your strengths and that's a challenge every week in the NFL. So there's not, you know, if you're a, a big time program, you recruited well for a couple of years, you know, you're, it's not just going to overwhelm. You're never going to have just overwhelming talent where you say, hey, I can ignore something. He's just better. I mean, that's the, that's a challenge in the NFL. And that's just not what we believe in. We're trying to, I, I have concern about every position and everything that's involved with this football team. So we're not going to neglect something and say we got it anywhere. Because that's, to me, that's, you'll get humbled and you'll, you'll fall off cliff quick. Josh, C CP has already reached a career high in offensive yards. Why yeah. do you think it's clicked so well for him in, here in year nine? Uh, you'd probably, that's a better question for him. Uh, you From know, point, what do you, what do you I see a good football player that's, that, can, that can move the football a lot of ways for us. Um, a guy, even at his age, there's some things that, you know, he's, again, all his experiences probably led up to this. He's, he kind of fits what we've, we've, we're asking him to do. He, he can move around. He can play a lot of roles. But So that's a better question for him. We're very pleased with him. I enjoy coaching him. How much in the process of getting him here did you talk to him about the multiple roles and how much is, did he embrace it then and how much did he embrace it now? Again, better question for him. We had a vision for him, and uh, it's evolving and, and very pleased with him. Are you asking, do you break it up in four quarters? Yeah. I don't break it up in four quarters. So, um, again, it's pretty pretty simple. It's not the answer you're looking for. All we try to do is, is focus, be objective after you, you play. What are our issues? What can we fix? How do we get better? And that's all we really concern ourselves with, regardless of the result. And so, uh, sure, you, you, you want to start the season better, but the reality, you, know, you got to deal with what the reality is. So, it's, it's such a long season, but if you're going to live and die with every day's narrative, and that's the world you want to live in, it's, this isn't the business for you. Michael. Yeah, I want to go back to Patterson for a second. Why, at, I mean, those skill position players, when they hit around 30, it, this is like a challenge between you and Josh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's keep going. No, it doesn't aggravate me. I promise you. Bassie let me. I'd stand here all day. I enjoy, I enjoy this more than you guys realize. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I, I just got to be somewhere at one o'clock. So. <laughs> we got plenty of coffee too. Uh, well, most, you know, when, when you look at running back, like the old, the old adage of like running backs and doing success. Like the Edgar Bennett's. Like the Edgar Bennett's. Anybody in Green Bay, D. Led's going to be up here. I'm waiting for him to, to have a KGB reference for the uh, pass rush. Or, or Mark Tremura. I'm waiting for all your old references. I'm just waiting for, for the Peppers Green Bay years. Yeah, well, um, D-Led, that's before D-Led, so he was there. And there was the I got you off your game. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so most running, you know, a lot of times the old adage is that running backs at age 30, to some extent maybe wide receivers, that's when they start to decline. Why, why do you think Patterson has, in some ways, maybe reversed that? Well, I mean, I... I think, I go back to the age question, I, I think there's always going to be outliers. I think 
you know, just look around society today. I mean, that, hell, you got one of the more productive quarterbacks, 45 years old. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're basically saying our history says, and it's probably true for most people, but there's always going to be outliers. I mean, the game's a lot different in the way guys train and the way they practice now. You know, just have working with guys that played in a different era. I mean, the, the game's gotten a lot safer and people are smarter the way they train. So there, that, that all has a huge factor into it, even at the, at the, young, the youth levels, right? So, uh, you know, even in the NFL in, in the 70s and 80s, there were teams that did full, full pads, goal line practices on Fridays. I mean, that's, I mean, you do that, they'd probably ban you from football now. So, and that's a small, I'm just saying, like, that's where a lot of things, and then think about the fields they play on now. You go from the old AstroTurf, I mean, God almighty, I mean, those guys in that era, especially those quarterbacks, they used to get, I mean, that was it. But people, you like to think people get smarter, although you make an argument that maybe we're not in that era anymore. But you look at society, but you look at football, you'd like to think it's gotten more progressive and safer, and that's why you're probably seeing guys play longer than they used to. Uh, and that, you know, whether that pertains to CP or not, I think you're seeing that more common around professional sports. Same thing in the NBA. I mean, you got guys that are, there's outliers, but there's guys that are playing a lot longer there, too. Do you think prime, maybe the prime years for an NFL player might change, though? And, and where he yeah, it's probably, a, that's a, that's probably a good question, but it's probably, a, you know, to answer that now, I don't have that data in front of me, and I haven't seen some kind of study on it. Uh, but I, I'd probably a really interesting study. So, anything else? Any yeah. Tigers? How do you feel about that? I'm so pissed they lost to Cincinnati in the Elite Eight. I love the reference. I'm right in his wheelhouse now. The early 90s, the early 90s sports team. Uh, I'm at the new Penny era. I'm thinking when I see Penny, I think of old Memphis State. Those uh, teams with Larry Finch and, and uh, yeah. Ryan Newsom. You got time for one more house of Josh? You said a couple times this year that momentum is real. Is that just within a game or is that week to week as well? You certainly feel it in the game more. Yeah. And that's what makes it like tough when you play in a place like New Orleans, right? I mean, you could feel it. Anybody who was in the stadium, you could feel it in the fourth quarter. And that's what you're obviously trying to combat. And um, luckily, we handled it well enough to have a chance to, to, to win it at the end. Uh, you know, week to week, I think the problem is if you ride, you certainly can build confidence. But if you skip steps during the week, that the momentum, you know, it's, it doesn't carry over. Because the game could go, right? You, you feel like right about the game and first play, the guy can – you know, fumble the open and kick off, and you put yourself in a hole right away. And you know, you just gotta, there's so many variables that can happen. Uh, I think you can definitely build confidence, but you can't skip steps because I don't think it's going to carry over. Whether we, however we finish in New Orleans or however Dallas played against Denver, not really going to. Once the ball is kicked off noon Central on Sunday, it's not going to. That game had no effect on it. All right, appreciate you guys. Get Max Thank you.